Hello friends and welcome to my last Saint Spotlight. It has been a joy to walk with you over the past year and hopefully you learned something new about some saints. Either you learned maybe a new saint that you weren't familiar with or you learned a little fun fact about a saint that you love dearly. So today is May 26th and we are spotlighting Saint Philip Neri. So what I like about Saint Philip was that he kind of bounced around discerning his vocation. He never really for a while had a specific call that he just automatically knew from the start. He tried the business world, he left that behind, he then studied theology for three years before temporarily leaving the idea of ordination and becoming a priest. From there he became an active layperson, which at that time was not very usual. A lot of people were confused on how a layperson could lead in the church, but of course lay people can lead in the church because that's so important. Eventually, however, he found himself back to the priesthood and was known to be an amazing confessor. He went on to found the Oratory, which is a religious institute where more informal prayer, more informal gatherings occur, especially for people of the secular world, like lay people. He was beatified only 20 years after he died in 1615 and became a saint in 1622. So what I want to focus on my last few minutes here is that St. Philip Neri is the patron saint of joy. He was always smiling, he was always cracking jokes, and he made those who were kind of uncomfortable with the idea of confession feel a little more at peace and feel a little more comfortable. Even when people accused the oratory, this religious institute he found, of heresy, he was always positive, always smiling. Now choosing joy kind of gets a bad rap because I think people tend to lump happiness and joy as the same thing. So happiness is always being in a good mood, always having things going your way which is unfortunately pretty realistic. All of us navigate and hit suffering at one time or another. But we also have joy, which is a deeper inner feeling that's much more lasting and much more foundational than happiness. A lot of times happiness is dependent on outside circumstances, whereas joy is choosing peace amidst the trials of our life and amidst the trials of suffering. So like many things I talk about, it's very easy to say, choose joy and go forth. But how do we actually do it? So I have three tips on how you can choose joy. Number one is to practice gratitude. Whenever I'm going through particularly hard seasons of my life, I always start my mornings by writing three things that I'm grateful for. It can be big things like my family. It could be little things like the fact that the sun is shining into my window. I always chose to do this in my mornings so that I could start my day off in a refreshed mindset. And it really does change the landscape of my day is starting with that attitude of gratitude as people like to say. I think is really important to choosing joy. So we have number one, which is practicing gratitude. Number two is completing more service. Sometimes we think of ourselves just a little too much. I know sometimes when I'm going through hard times, I tend to think, why is all of these things happening to just me and me alone? Why am I the only person that is suffering? When we dedicate our thoughts to service, it really does help put our focus on others, especially in praying for others. Being able to help someone in need and I most recommend in direct conversation, like being in a soup kitchen, as opposed to something a little more removed, like a construction project. Sharing in each other's lives, I think brings me more joy to help accompany people in their joys and their sorrows and whatever that might look like for you as service. It could be mowing your neighbor's lawn or something even smaller than that. So we have practicing gratitude. We have completing more service. Number three, it wouldn't be a proper saint spotlight if I didn't mention prayer all things pray. I'm a firm believer that anything can be prayer. Any moment can be a prayer. In times of trouble, in times of gratitude, a quick deep breath with a sometimes a help me Lord or a come Holy Spirit, that's you living out prayer in all things. And what better way to choose joy than to orient yourself to the one thing that really gives us all everlasting hope. Joy is pretty hard to practice in the daily interactions of our life, but it is possible. And I have the three ways to do it of practicing gratitude, completing more service, and prayer. These are just three ways. I encourage you to find more, but I do encourage you to choose joy in all things and in all situations. Thank you all for listening, and God bless you.